it always tends to be like 10, 15, 20 minutes breaks in between. But these two teams are showing that uh, they want to get back into it. Evil Corporation, of course, uh, feeling really frustrated about game number one, not being able to really do or create anything, get any momentum going, and Complexity Gaming just riding on the momentum at the same time. So they don't want to get a break because they always want to continue with the hype that they are currently on. So understandable for both teams here. Yeah, I mean, Oscar had an amazing game last game. I, I would easily vote him as the MVP of that game. He just completely capitalized on mistakes. And that unfortunate timing on Ember Boy jump on bottom really decided the momentum of the game. So I expected that behemoth pick up. First pick, Aluna, though? Um, I don't know, man. I haven't seen that. This is going to be one of those interesting drafts again. So... Second pick, Profit. But uh, yeah, I mean, Aluna, we could see it in the mid, of course. We've seen Boxy play that, or BMG have played it a little bit. Uh, I know that Complexity has played it sometime as well on Fuzzy, but it it tends to fall short when it comes to that late game. Like, it gets a little bit of an attack speed when you throw the Emerald Lightning, so it has the potential to be acting as a little bit of a semi-carry, but usually it doesn't work out too well. Uh, of course, the 5 second stun um, in the early game is a very deadly tool for ganks, but uh, I am I would assume that this is going to be a support Aluna in this game. I don't think I've seen Embray ever play the Aluna mid. Yeah, I agree with that to some extent, and... The snap pick Katulfon against Parasite, that was interesting. So they allowed Evil Corporation to get Parasite, but then they snap pick Katulfon. So I, I don't think they value Parasite as much as Evil Corporation does on the complexity side, which is actually really interesting because I know a lot of teams value Parasite very highly because he is that kind of counter carry pick as a jungler. And pa President coming out on Evil Corporation. Mm -hmm. A Luna and Prisoner, that's a deadly combination. Uh, Legion team, they had a profit in the mid in a dual lane with Riptide in game number one. Now with game number two coming out, I, I think that Evil Corporation expects pretty much the same. Profit isn't necessarily the babysitter for the safe lane. He is more of that like strong presence in the dual lane in the mid. So Evil Corporation is just going to go ahead and say that, hey, we can do that as well. We're going to pick a strong lineup for ourselves and we're going to challenge you two on two in the mid. Yep. And something to keep in mind is that Moira hasn't even been touched. Oh, in this entire time. Yeah, I don't. That's... I don't know what's about that. Like, a complexity is just always picking up the profit nowadays. Like, I've been watching some of their screams earlier this week as well, and every single time it's profit, profit, and profit. Yeah, they really love that hero, and I think that just turned into a complexity hero. And again, Tandra ban coming out from Formless. <laughs> it's. Yeah. I think it mainly comes down to recent scrims coming down from Evil Corporation. They have always picked up Tandra for Bray, and he's just amazing on that hero. And I expect Formless to not want Bray on that hero, because mm -hmm. he's just amazing on Tandra. I, I can't say for certain about cycle number three, because I, I wasn't around too much, but I know for the first two cycles at least, Sane on that suicide, he got 100% win with Tundra and Pharaoh. Those are his key heroes. He hasn't lost a single game with those. And I think that goes for cycle number three as well. So, so far in Home Tour Season 4, I think that he does have 100% win percentage with the Tundra and the Pharaoh. So that's quite impressive, and that certainly explains the Tundra ban here. Uh, perhaps we could see a Pharaoh in this game instead. Yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, Formless, I think he's thinking of picking a hard carry right now, and it's very difficult to pick a hard carry when you're facing a Parasite and Prisoner. So I'm not actually too sure on what he's thinking. Dark mm -hmm. Lady is definitely an option here. But yeah, let's see what he feels comfortable with. He might be picking up a solo hero again and maybe do the dual mid like they did last game. Yeah, he's gonna have to wait and see. I think that uh, normally I would say that a ranged hero would be preferred, seeing as they already got the Cthulhu and the Behemoth in this game, but seeing as the Hellborn team is a lot about that pick-off potential, I wouldn't be too surprised if they just pick up another tanky presence and uh, just go balls to the wall, more or less, just try to be, uh, like tank up as much as possible. Something like, uh, I don't know, maybe not perhaps a Malkin, but something similar that actually has that a little bit more of a tanky presence. That's true. And I'm gonna go and... to Wild, so let's... Oh. I, I mean, it is the tank of presence that they're looking for, at least. And he does uh, kind of fill that carry role, in a sense. Yeah, with the 12, sl uh, 12 slots, you definitely secure late game with that hero. <laughs> True. And something to keep in mind is that Prison is really good against melee cores. So 
they do want to keep in mind. Oh, Pharaoh pickup. Yep, you called it. Ooh. Yep, if Tundra gets banned, then we pick up the Pharaoh. Let's see if the 100% win streak is going to continue for the side of Evil Corporation. Pharaoh is really good against Behemoth as well. If I, I think Zane has to focus on catching the Behemoth in team fights because Evil Corporation knows how uh, Behemoth took the took the game last game. The, Behemoth had such a huge factor last game. As long as Zane can catch Behemoth before the team fights or during the team fights, Evil Corporation should win uh, those pickoffs and ganks and uh, clashes. So it really comes down to Zane's playing. Oh, Sand Race. Ooh, That's really interesting. They're going to steal it away from the side of Evil Corporation. That's a hero, by the way, that Imba Boy got 100% win percentage with in uh, Hunter Season 4. Um, so... He's amazing on that hero. Yeah, like I, the kind of synergy that I've seen them play with the hero, like the fact that like they had the Moira and they put the shards of Harkon on the Samurai just before he ultimated, and then he gets a free stun, like global stun on the map. It's just so yeah. impressive. So yeah, <laughs> now complexity is gonna run it as well. But I, to me, like I don't know how you feel about it, but to me it feels like the complexity got one too many key heroes, like one too many heroes that actually needs farm. Like mm -hmm. they don't really have too much of an initiation. Like unless they get a good start, um, as we saw in previous game, for example, on Oscar with that Behemoth, or yeah. like a Tolophant, as we saw in game number one for Embrae. Like mm -hmm. you don't really have that, you know, lineup stun. Like you don't really have that scare factor. Uh, as the Hellborn team does, because as soon as Pharaoh, for example, gets level 6, he's going to be able to roam around the map, and Prisoner, of course, always got the hook, and Prison Parasite can pick up the Wild Hunter, so there's a lot more scary factors for the Hellborn team, and I would actually prefer uh, their draft over the Legion team this time. Yeah, it definitely comes down to how the momentum goes, because Behemoth and Ketulfan do rely on that start, because their portal key timing does... Uh, decide the momentum on the Legion side and how they can affect the game. But Hellborn, they definitely do have the advantage of choosing how the game will play out in terms of momentum with the Pharaoh level 6, Prisoner hooks, and Malakin just is just amazing in teamfights. The AoE fear is just amazing. And puzzle box timing, that's going to be very scary for the Legion team. But let's see how they lane it here. Because I'm not sure on the dual mid or they will let Oh, it does seem like Ember Boy is being solo top here. They, he does get the pool regen and a ward. Hmm. Yeah, I would I would assume that Ember Boy is going to go one on one. Like if it's the same as this previous game where Behemoth is in the uh, suicide. I mean, as you were talking about as well, he isn't necessarily optimal for one versus one situations. So Ember Boy should be more than fine. He doesn't really need a babysitter, and therefore they can just focus on either playing offensive here with a Luna prisoner to try to shut down uh, Ember Boy. We we're talking about it as well during the draft. The Prophet isn't necessarily optimal here to babysit. He's more suited for that the dual mid. So manning up here. For from the side of Evil Corporation, I think it's the right idea. Yeah, definitely. And something important to note is that Oscar uses his ward to spot dives coming out from Parasite. He doesn't use it to block the hard cam, so it will give Parasite some sort of space in terms of ganking him. So he should be very mindful of that. And a Malakin with a Parasite combination against the Behemoth, that's going to be really scary. Yep, and you know what else? Or wait, did we have a pause in this game? I don't think we did. No, we didn't. Is that the first time ever? <laughs> First time in comp scene? Like they, they don't even want to break in between the games and they don't even bother to pause. These guys are ready. <laughs> they sure are. They're not messing around. And it does look like offensive tri lane bottom coming out here. So maybe Oscar knew about this. So he set up the ward to spot rotations. And now Sandwraith Prophet with the Wild Soul against that offensive tri lane. I do expect Hellborn to win this tri lane because Sandwraith is not very good at laning phase and. Parasite is just amazing at ganking, so it really depends on how they play out this bottom lane. Oh, Prophet is gonna try to block the hard camp, I think. He's gonna try to stay, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. He might have to pay with his life if he actually were to stay. Yeah, he's gonna try to fall back instead. War of Revelation played, or placed right there by Tank of it as well, but they are gonna be able to secure the spawn at least. Um, That's can... really important for the Parasite, because that really messes up his timings, because Wild Soul is starting on the left-hand side, so he mainly has the right-hand side to farm. And if that got body blocked, that would have just slowed everything down for him. And now they secure the bottom lane, and Prophet walks top to secure top and mid. So, oh, interesting I like decisions. that, a decision at least, by Love. Um, the fact that he's actually rotating to the top, as you mentioned. Yep. Uh, to shut down uh, Imbobo in that case. Yep, and 
early stacks on Ancients is going to really help out the Wild Soul to maintain farm because he's a hero that can take Ancients at such early levels. So stacking Ancients is very important for Legion. And I feel sorry for Formless down in the bottom lane. This is going to be a very hard lane for him. <laughs> sure is. Uh, I mean, he's, he's getting some experience now, at least. I mean, there's no lane skipping or anything like that. I would almost prefer that from near, just go out, you know, behind the tower and pull the lane into the forest or something, just to prevent the farm uh, from Imbo Boy getting those early levels. But it uh, seems like Imbo Boy is at least going to get level 3 here. Um, pretty much for free. Yeah, yeah. And some last hits as well. So, uh, I mean, it's not the worst situation. Like, he's still getting, like, pretty yeah, he much will get some farm, and it really depends on how they control the lane because he does lose lane control now which will hurt his farm and it makes him easier to gank for the parasite he's in a wild, wild hunter right now and he's kind of looking for the wild soul running around just a little bit he's gonna find him but mm -hmm. top lane malkin is on 200 gpm so he's not doing too well love supporting on profit is giving him a really hard time. Oh, mid lane, by the way, I'm not entirely sure what happened right there. Sane overstayed his welcome a little bit. Aluna's gonna come in though, try to get a turn uh, onto Ketulafant. I don't think it's going to be happening though. Maybe if they Aluna are... was level 3, they could have done a power throw, but nope, not quite enough. So both teams yeah. in, or both the heroes in the mid dropping in HP, but they are in, indeed gonna stay alive. So no first blood so far. DD being secured on Zane though, oh, that's gonna win him the mid lane. Because Ketulfan has, oh my god, that's really suffer for mid. Yeah, Zane's gonna have a really nice time in mid now, especially <laughs> with the DD. He's gonna, I expect him to win last hitting now. And really well played by what you got. He just body blocks both hard camps, and now that forces Parasite to move back into his own woods. Yeah, and that. this was what we were talking about as well during the draft, like if in case uh, Behemoth and uh, Ketulofan doesn't get that good laning phase, they don't get an early pull key, then they don't really have too much of a scare factor, and then it's up for the Hellborn team to uh, entirely decide um, like the phase of the game. As soon as Sane gets level 6, like he can start moving, and then like the top lane and the bottom, both of them have to be really damn careful. And yep. uh, yeah, Formless, I mean, he's only at 160 gold per minute so far. I mean, sure, he's level 4. Uh, if he can get level 6, he can start moving around the map as well. But uh, I don't feel like they have enough damage output in the Legion lineup. And I mean, even if Samurai were to get some farm, like, let's just say that this would have been an optimal game for him where he could just free farm down here. Like, I mean, there's, there would still be a Wild Soul in the forest taking up all his farm. I feel like the Legion lineup is almost a little bit too farm dependent. Yeah, it really depends on a really good start for their lineup, and they are securing 300 GPM on Behemoth, so he will have that early PK timing, like last game, I expect. But mid DD, he does... Oh? <laughs> Thought he was gonna jump <laughs> It's him. so damn difficult for both of those. Oh wait, Wilds is gonna... What? He's um, going in with the haste. Yeah, about that. <laughs> I, I, I feel like this is gonna be a very passive game compared to last game because we saw um, quite a few early scrimmages. Oh, TP on top lane. Aluna comes in top. Initiation on Malakin here. Oh, Parasite is in the neighborhood as well. I think they're gonna be able to turn this one around onto the Behemoth Minotaur. Is he going to be able to get the stun off? This is the first but if he gets it. Yeah, but this ward is gonna seal the deal. Oh my god, almost the turn around. If Prophet would actually have been on the same page as Behemoth right there, they could have been able to turn it. But now instead, Love is gonna fall as well. Not what they were looking for whatsoever. Uh, definitely a good start here for Evil Corporation. And now, what? where do you go if you're a complexity? Like, you got the kind of lineup that focuses so heavily on the portal keys and then onto the late game, but everything is falling apart during laning phase. Yeah, and that just turned the Malkin from 200 GPM to 300 GPM as well. And it gave Parasite a real good boost in GPM because he did rotate jungles, and that really hurts his farm uh, in terms of his GPM. So, see four heroes nearly at 300 GPM on Evil Corporation, and you compare that to the Legion side, they only have Oscar top farmer. Sandwraith is at 170 GPM, and he's gonna suffer against the Prisoner, because plus one bottom with Prisoner, that should be a dead Sandwraith, before he hits six, of course. But love moving back into the bottom lane here. They are gonna try and secure bottom lane, but it really depends on Wild Soul to just take control of this game with 
in insane farm. Yeah, but I mean, can you do that? Like, even if he gets farm, like even if he's if he was on five hundred gold per minute, I don't feel like they would be able to accomplish anything unless they got the pole keys on both Gitolfant and the beam off. Like, they just don't have anything to catch the Hellborn team with. That is definitely true. They they do rely on the PK timings and. That gank on top really hurt the PK timing on Behemoth, but he does have Steam Boots now, and Ember Boy with the gank does get Steam Boots and Chalice, so it is a favorable matchup for Malakin now. Yeah, Legion team, by the way, gonna fall back just a little bit down here. There is still a water uh, side behind the tier 1 tower down here at the bot lane, by the way, so they can see if there are any ports coming in from Evil Corporation or from the complexity side. They're gonna try to go on Aluna here a little bit while Souls running in from TP the side coming as in, well. Though. Oh, who is that? Is that going to be Sano? Oh, it's going to be Parasite. Well, that's not going to help them too much. Yeah, and they do spot him with the ward, so... This could oh. be... Uh... What you got body blocking the camp again? That's really good play. That's just really good play. Yep, heads up play by him. Definitely. Oh, and Parasite actually blocked <laughs> Wild Souls. <laughs> um, as a result... Oh, and Luna being caught. Whoa, that's a... Careful, careful, near. You need to be careful. Like the Mirage, he doesn't have enough mana for it. Um, how much is that? 150, actually. Yeah, Health Pot is going to bring Aluna back up. But I'm not entirely sure if I like Parasite being down here. I almost feel like he should just focus on farming because if he gets that puzzle box, it's going to be so much more uh, difficult for the Legion team to actually like keep their map vision and their, um, like, yeah, their momentum in this game. Uh, and That's Sane true. as well. I feel like he should be the one roaming around rather than a Parasite at this point. I feel like when they committed to that TP with Parasite, they really want to now set something up because it does hurt his farm. So him staying in this side of the woods now hurts uh, Formless a lot because as you can see, he has to run back to base and his GPM is just going to be dropping now. But he does start moving back into his own woods, I think. Yeah, I think we're going to be able to see something here in the mid lane in the near future, seeing as Imbob or Formless is indeed, yeah, moving back to base. Okay. Well, Tanker decides to stay into the jungle, so they are going to be putting on the pressure on Legion side. But this game, it really depends on Oscar and what you got, because they're the top farmers on the team right now, and Oscar's the initiation on the team. He is trying to set up something on mid on Zane here. Oh, yeah, the Mirage is, of course, an option. Where are the follow-up oh, here? In. in this is going. Oh, oh my god! My okay, god. he just fucking got deleted. He got deleted from the game right there. Everything was used, both the shockwave and the mirage, of course, as well as the obliterate from Kitolfan. So that's a lot. I'm not even sure if that's worth it, to be honest. Like, sure, it's good to get a kill, but using three ultimates for that one kill, that's gonna leave Evil Corporation to pretty much do whatever they want for the next Bottom few line. minutes. Yep, here we go. I'm not sure if Legion team wants to commit to this. I mean, they've used all their ultimates oh as we were God. talking about. The prison break is up. Is it going to be able to drag them in? It is. What you got? Kind of tanky though. With Wild Soul Shockwave is here as well from Behemoth, oh Fisher, and what's the Hellborn team doing? <laughs> that just shows how powerful Wild Soul is with no items on the hero. God damn it. That shared. Yeah, that share damage on him, like, it's ridiculous. And the life seal is just amazing. But still, though, I feel like this is a mistake. Like, I've, I mean, I'm not necessarily blaming the Hellborn team, but I feel like, I mean, if as long as they go as five people, this should oh. be good. The rest of the Pharaoh is still up as well. He doesn't want to use the trample, of course, before that is activated. Oh my gosh, I don't... That was a kill right there, if he were to hit it. Tormentous Soul was level 4, as you can see right there. Yeah, Fast is really low. Uh, so that's really unfortunate on his part. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. That would have secured at least a good trade-off, because solo kills are always good. But I, th I think somehow Complexity just put themselves back into the game. They Now they have Steam Boots and nearly Energize on Sandwraith, and now he can turn into that gank potential hero. He's gonna farm as much as he can before his ultimate comes off, so I expect him to slowly move back into base, regen up, and then set up a gank again with the ultimate as soon as he can. Yeah, Cause they do see. rely on him being active in the game to be able to turn this game. Because he can't just sit and farm this game. Yeah, now we've reached a point where it's really difficult for the Hellborn team as well to get any pickups whatsoever, because if they overcommit one more time, then evil or complexity gaming is going to be in a more than comfortable position in this game. And as we can see here at the bot lane, Prophet is here. They aren't entirely sure if he's got any backup though, so they still need to be careful. Mirage, nope, no mana for uh, Formless so far. 
the item pickups on Wattle kind of shows how complex he wants to play out this game. He does go Alchemist Bones, so they are going full greed here, which is the correct play, I feel. Because they need to be greedy to be able to come back into this game. Because it forces Evil Corporation to make plays on them. Because if Evil Corporation doesn't go for ganks of Wild Soul, he's going to maintain this 400 plus GPM. They are looking for oh, a play perfect. on bottom, yeah. Yep, and Wild Soul is here as well. I think this is going to be a kill. There are TP supports coming in, but I think it's going to be too late. Of course, the Breath of the Fairy is available. Is he going to be able to use it? He's going to put himself in a very risky position if he were to try. Nope, it's not going to go for it. The prisoner is going to go down and portal key timing is now even further away from him. Sure, the Legion oh, team is putting lane, pressure. Lane. Oh my god, he's going to hit the sword. He's going to get wow. an insecure kill onto Oscar. So at least getting the one for one trade right there. But at the same time, like complexity gaming, I feel like they should be more than comfortable with getting those trades at this point. Because they certainly have the late game. Yeah, I'm, I mean... Right now, they're going to do a lot of damage to tier 2 as well. So they are hurting map control on the complexity side. But it will give Behemoth that free farm space. And it was really unfortunate that Behemoth died when he had one point... Oh, top lane, by the way, Parasite. Trample is going to go straight into the wall right there. They're going to chase. Pharaoh is going to come in from the side as well. going to use the Breath of the Pharaoh right there to catch him. There is no Trample up. Another two seconds. But Prophet is here to help them out. And... Mm, whoa! He has got deleted there as well. What the hell was that burst? And here we go. Malikin from the side as well. They're going to get another kill onto Love. So both teams, like... I'm not entirely sure what's going on in this game. It doesn't really feel too coordinated. It just feels like random kills happening all over the map. Yeah, it's really hard to... These drafts are really weird because they are sending Prisoner. They did secure bottom lane with Prisoner with the early tri lane, and then they turned it into a solo lane without any proper vision from his side. So he can't really decide on when he's going to get ganked. Mid lane being initiated on. Yeah, oh, was... I'm not sure about that one though. Shockwave's gonna go up, so is the Mirage. I think that Sane over State is welcome big time. I... Yeah, definitely. Ah, I don't know. I mean, Sane, I mean, 100% as we were talking about uh, win percentage on this Pharaoh, but so far, like, he's been very stagnant in the mid lane. Like, he hasn't really been, or like, found, finding himself a good place whatsoever. Like, he's just been like more or less he's gotten what like one kill throughout the entire game that's it and he's building into an astro why would you build into an astro it just shows how they want to play out this game and as you just saw malakin just did a sword throw which took away half the ancients the triple ancients because of the ward from Nia. but yeah coming back to that astro pickup i i think the evil corporation is going for early Team fights. They're not looking to secure the late game as much as they would be. They just want to get those early items. PK coming out from prison as well, and the Astrolabe timing right now on Zane. He does move to the bottom lane, so they're just looking for pickoffs and then followed up with tower kills because they want to put on the pressure on complexity as much as they can. But that portal key timing again. 14 minutes. Oscar man, he's just amazing. Ooh, and bottom lane. Look at this, by the way, yeah, the Veiled Rod's gonna be popped right there because Samrath is indeed farming that camp. But the Astro is finished now on Sane, but still, I don't think it's going to have too much of an impact. <laughs> oh my god, a hook. Is Wildsoul really the right target to go on, though? Mirage here? Yeah, it seems to be. He's gonna drop rather fast right there. And now, Samrath need to be careful as well. Parasite with the Strider chasing after. Is he going to be able to get the face hug? Goes off. No Desert Curse for another two seconds. This might be a kill. Raptor <laughs> Fire is gonna come in as well just to secure it. Well played right there. Yeah, it just shows how they want to play the game. The Pharaoh Astrolabe pickup, they just want to get the quick item, teamfight item, and then start pushing with that, take towers. Because they already have two towers top, and now they just need to keep up the pressure, don't let them get as much space as they want, and for them to control the pace. Love's trying to get away from the roll. <laughs> yeah, luckily, there is no after the Pharaoh up uh, right there, but uh, he's going to pick up a haste rune at least, so... Yep. And now Malakin goes for the triple ancients. That's He's already at 500 GPM. Wow. Such a beast on that hero. He's doing a really solid job. I did not expect that 500 plus gold per minute this far. I mean, this was a Malakin that was in a 1 versus 2 situation as well during the laning phase. So he's really been doing a good job recovering here. Yeah, and the gank on top really changed the outcome of that top lane for him. <laughs> what is he doing, by the way, at the top lane? <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure. I think they're setting up for a counterplay, but they do get spotted with the ward and oh. Prisoner does TP top, so it looks like they're trying to set up something. No, they're moving away though. You see the ward of sight here placed by Nier on the hill? Oh yeah. That's going to spot the rotations as well, so. Yep. Don't think Fossey's gonna fall for this one. Yeah, definitely not. And the Ancients being warded by Nier on the Legion Ancients, Love is coming to counter ward it. He does get it, but it really slows down the farming speed of Wild Soul because he does rely on those ancients to maintain his high GPM 
And as you can see, he's only at 400 GPM. With Triple Ancients, he should be able to take it even higher to 500 GPM. But he doesn't have that much space. Like, he's not farming right now. He's just running around, trying to give as much space to Formless as he can while maintaining map control. And well, look at Parasite. He's just running around wherever he wants. Yeah, well, speaking about uh, Formless as well on the sand roof down here at the bot lane, I mean, he went for the Energizer now. What possible item could you see here next? I mean, is this the kind of game where you go for a Mock of Brilliance? Oof. That's a really hard question. I think, I think it really depends on how the next few minutes turns out because if Hellborn gets picks, uh, pick offs on. Oh, mid lane, by the way, hold that fault. Prisoner might be in trouble. The shockwave as well. They're gonna try to burst him down before the TP sword is gonna arrive, and it seems like it's going to be successful. Parasite is here though. He's flanking from the side, and Cthulhu is stuck in the background. DD is up on the Pris or on the Pharaoh, and here comes the Imba Boy as well. Prophet Ultimate goes up, of course, gonna try to keep him locked down, but it's not going to be enough damage. Samrath is still not joining the fight. Yeah, Evil Corporation is just. They, Whoa, they're Prophet. just stomping the team fights. <laughs> He's gonna Prophet. drop. Oh my god, nice try right there from Love. It's actually going oh to be enough. God. <laughs> but yeah, it just shows how far ahead they are, and they're just capitalizing on team fights. As soon as the fight happened, Imberboy just immediately started moving down towards the mid lane, and you just saw how much damage he had. It's, he's just gonna get more and more scary. Yeah, I have to give props to Nier as well in this game. He's been doing a really solid job with the ward situation, like always on top of it. And as we can see here, he's sneaking one into deep into the Legion Forest as well. That's going to create a lot of trouble for them. Yeah, it's going to spot a lot of the rotations. Because Legion side, they're, they're kind of forced to stay behind the river. They can't move, or, uh, move past the river because look at the Hellborn Towers. They have all their Tier 1 Towers nearly at full health, like... Oh man, it's it's going to be a really rough game for complexity. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, they do have the portal keys now onto the Behemoth and the Cthulhu fund as well, so there's a little bit of an initiation tool. But yeah, do they have the damage follow-up? I don't think so. Seeing as Samur is struggling so much. Oh my god, Behemoth is going to jump straight in there, but the Word of Revelation just oh. runs out. There was one on the hill. Uh, and the puzzle box is unfortunately <laughs> a little bit too late. That was so incredibly lucky. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Parasite nearly has his level 3 puzzle box as well, and that's going to be the Congo timing, I feel. The moment he gets that, they're going to start rotating for Congo. Yeah, Shrunken Head is going to finish up here in 300 gold as well on the Malkin, so they definitely got the potential. Uh, oh, Invis Behemoth top! Oh my god, it's a shockwave up, it's another 5 seconds! He's going to... What? Wait, what? He's not going to commit to that. Did he Did he have vision on Prisoner? I, don't I think, he... think he barely missed him. Damn, that's unfortunate. That's that's really lo unlucky. Oh, Veil Drought Pharaoh again, this time with Bob Dama as well. And again, another triple. Oh, the Mirage, though, that's a great counter for the Veil Drought. And right there, yeah, I'm gonna catch the Pharaoh. It's going to be on cooldown now for another 100 seconds, but at least, yeah, they catched that Pharaoh. Yeah, it did, it did stop any possible ganks. Prisoner does go back to base. He nearly has his item. I'm. Guessing that's going to be a shrunken head, but Parasite, oh my god, he's so farmed right now. And look at the GPM charts, Ember Boy at 600 GPM. Such a crazy farmer. And he gets the shrunken head already, yep. Yeah, clearing another tri-sec actions there is just going to buff up the gold per minute chart even more. And, and combo as... timing. Oh, are you sure? I think they might, yeah, they might have vision here on the Legion team where at least they know that they are in the area so they're gonna try to make an attempt here and try to potentially catch Formless off guard. I mean, the only, yeah, there are five people down here. They're gonna run on top of the Word of Revelation now so the Legion team knows for a fact that they are in here. And yeah, and they immediately start split pushing top here with Fuzzy. Oh, Trample actually being used here by uh, Kitolfant as well. That's a little bit risky, seeing as he doesn't necessarily know for a fact that there are five people down there. That just shows how confident they are with the calls that they make, because the moment they expected this side push, or this push coming out on the bottom lane, they immediately started counter-pushing to trade towers, and that's really good. Love can now get deep wards into the jungle to spot Emberboy farming. So I think it, this does favor um, complexity quite a bit, because now they get this deep vision as well, and now they will spot rotations much faster than they would before. 
Yeah, I agree. This uh, feels uh, similar to what happened during game number one when Complexity was pushing two towers and yep. allowed Recent Gaming to kind of like take over their forest. Oh, are they going to be able to catch anyone? Doesn't look like it. Control event. Oh, close one. Yeah, Tormented getting... soul. Yeah. Just in the nick of time, he's going to be able to port out of there. So getting the tower and getting that yeah deep ward. But I don't know about that ward at the same time. That love is placed right there. Sure, it's great for you know catching. Uh, the TB support if you're pushing tier 1 tower, but as we see, I mean, tier, tier 1 tower is already down now, so this ward of side is literally going to show nothing. Yeah, I mean, it barely misses the tower, I think, so they might not even see TPs, but oh, mid lane, huge hook. Oh, Prophet, yeah, it's uh, it's only a kill on the support, but hey, every kill matters for this point, or at this point, and now this might open up for the Conger kill as well. Still yeah. haven't seen it happen. I mean, Shrunken I'm... Head is up a Malik, and the Puzzle Box level 3 on to Tanka. Yeah, I'm I'm really surprised that they're not looking to take the Congo because they have puzzle box level three, so they should be able to clear out all the vision uh, Love has placed for Congo, which we know they have none. So I'm guessing if they knew uh, what vision they had around Congo, they would be taking it right now. But what they are looking God? to set up. Whoa, are they actually going to commit to this one? He's not in the beer form at the moment. Puzzle box going to be popped there as well. I'm not. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, risky place right there from what you got, actually going to eat that and take the damage to the face. That's so much gold for him. Uh, gonna continue to push the tower, still no conger though, they feel comfortable enough to take a team fight even without a token. Uh, I don't think that they are confident enough to actually break the base quite yet though. Yeah, I, I would disagree with that as well, if they decided to push up base against Behemoth again. Level 2 Shockwave as well, he's in a really good position for team fighting. And Fuzzy's just constantly split pushing. He's making a huge nuisance out of himself. So I guess the ward placed by Love is to spot any counter ganks coming out from the split push. Yeah, could be. I mean, Fuzzy, yeah, he's doing a great job actually trying to split push, but it doesn't feel like he has the optimal hero. It doesn't really feel like a fussy hero, this Gatolo fan. Like, when I picked it up, the third picked it, as we were talking about during the draft, like as a counter to the Parasite, but I expected what you got, seeing as that's his signature hero, more or less, the Gatolo fan, for him to play it. Instead, I put it on Fuzzy, and just doesn't feel like that, you know, high skill factor hero, like the Prisoner, for example, or, I don't know, something similar to the Midas, or something that Fuzzy usually tends to play. Like, he's stuck on a Gatolo fan, that and it just feels like he's so limited in this game yeah he is sort of limited in terms of how he usually plays but if you if you noticed Sanrate's item pickup they are playing they are deciding to pick up Machia so he's not really looking they're not really looking to make plays anymore they're looking to just play passive dodge team fights side push and now he has mock so I'm expecting formless to just get boosted up to 400 plus GPM very soon yeah, if he can finish... Oh, yeah, actually, he finished up the mock, yeah. Alright, good, but the token of life at the same time, like, mock of the Brilliance is a farming tool mainly. So, yeah, as you were talking about, like, they want to let or let this game drag out then to the uh, 50 or the 40-50 minute mark, at least, um, if they want to be comfortable enough to take this. And Malekin, I mean, continuing on that 600 gold per minute now with a token of life as well, I almost feel like they could potentially just... just position themselves outside of Legion base at this point and just wait there until they slowly get a tower with, for example, a catapult of parasites. Yeah, definitely. And Legion really depends on spotting split pushes. Oh, they do spot Sanwraith and Catulfont, so they are running away. They did spot him with the Tormented Soul from Zane. And they do TP away. I, I feel like Legion has to split push as fast as they can because they know they are on a timer right now. Because they want to push with Token of Life on Evil Corporation. So Complexity needs to side push as fast as they can. As soon as they see them top, they need to start pushing bottom, and vice versa. And that's exactly what Formos... Oh, oh yeah, Prophet gonna fall once more. As you can wow. see, like there's not a single Ward of Sight up Ooh, for it. Oh, who's in trouble? Wild Soul is caught, and he is going to drop another pick off for the side of... Or... <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even... Wow. Oh, by the way, Behemoth might fall as well. If they get this kill, that wouldn't have been... Or he didn't have a buyback at that time. So if they were actually being able to get that kill onto the Behemoth, that would have opened up for Arax, at least. Definitely. And he didn't panic and use the Shockwave. So that's really good for Oscar as well. But this is a very scary push coming out. 
Yeah, the token of life is up for another three minutes and of course there is a shrunken head with a 10 second timer as well. This is not going to be easy for the side of complexity to actually defend. The mirage is up and there we go to trample, gonna try to buy some time at least. But Imboboy doesn't seem too concerned so far. I'm they do have to buyback for Wild Soul. That they do. They're gonna continue to push for... F oh, Evil Corporation actually going to head back. They don't want to waste the token quite yet. They want to region him up a little bit. I'm not sure about that. I almost feel like they could have forced the buyback at least from Wild Soul right there. Hmm. I think Evil Corporation is really respecting complexity right now. So they're really afraid of uh, really afraid of complexity turning the game. So it just depends on how they're comfortable. And right now they're just comfortable sitting back and taking it to the late game. Yeah. They don't want to make any simple mistakes that would cost them the game because if they let Wild Soul get map control and one team, if they lose one team fight, Complexity will just get map control and that will give Formless and what you got the space that they need. Because what you got is 450 GPM and Formless is going to slowly increase his GPM. He's on a 512 right now. And seeing as a oh, start. What just happened? Had... Rafter the Pharaoh missed. I'm not entirely sure who he was aiming for, but it is on cooldown now. I could hear the animation. Okay. Well, Behemoth is Veldrotted. They are looking to push mid again. I think they were waiting for Demonic on Malakin. Yep, the token's still up and running. Another 140. Trample's gonna go off once more. Stacking the stuns a little bit there with the Fisher. This is going to secure the melee racks. There is nothing the Legion team can do. I mean, they cannot jump the Malakin because he's going to respawn right back and there's so much support from him at the side. Oh my god, actually, Hellborn team is going to try a hook right there. Bray, that could have been an opportunity for the Legion team to actually land a counter initiation. Yeah, definitely. And now they're getting the the next items, and then they're gonna start pushing again. Because they only have one minute on token left, so I don't expect them to go for another Rax right now. They're just gonna wait for their next items and start pushing again. Because they do have map control and all the space to farm, so it's it's the correct play by Evil Corporation as well. But Complexity is trying to set up a counterplay top, because they expect someone to be farming here, so they are waiting, they're gonna wait for the risky play. Yeah, I mean they have to they have to do something that's out of the textbook. Like they they just cannot be ordinary this game any longer. Like it's not working. Evil Corporation is playing too safe. They are have they've clearly shown that they are not going to be making any misplays whatsoever. They're just gonna play it safe yep. until they can land this game. So complexity, yeah, they really need to try to make some kind of gank attempt happen with the Veil Rods. Why is he slot spotted here with the ward from near though? So they are moving everyone top. Ooh, it seems like Complexity Gaming realizes that something is up, seeing as everyone is missing from the map as well. Um, another 18 seconds, by the way, on the token. Damn, it feels like Malkin has had its token for forever. Yeah. Parasite's kind of in the mid lane. He was pushing mid, and that forces Complexity back again. Yep, very, very stagnant game between those two teams. Evil Corporation, of course, leading the way, but they're just playing so incredibly safe. They don't want to make a single mistake or allow complexity to get their, or make their way back into the game, which is understandable. But at the same time, I feel like almost they could be a little bit more offensive than they currently are. I mean, farming their own forest, I almost feel like they could be farming the Legion forest. Definitely. And I feel like with teams like Complexity and Evil Corporation, they're teams that they easily capitalize on mistakes. So... I think Evil Corporation knows that if they make a mistake, Complexity will capitalize on it. So that's why they're just playing it safe. They know that um, one one mistake in terms of team fighting could just bring them back into the game, and they don't want to let that happen. Especially how after game one went. Void Talisman picked up on near here, going to help him to get some survivability in the fights versus the wild soul and of course the mirage as well in case imba boy were to go out there and try to get a solo kill with the mirage so far i mean samurf hasn't really been able to show us anything this game he just hasn't been to the point where he could snowball like ever since the laning phase where he was struggling he's just been trying to recover and it's been a really tougher game for him behemoth veiled right at bottom here oh are they gonna be able to get a kill pharaoh of course the mirage is up as well this is going to be an easy one <laughs> Like, the damage of that hero is ridiculous. Oh, Parasite. He's just running with them. Oh, 
Rip. Is he gonna jump in? No mana on Behemoth whatsoever, and of course with the Mirage down for Sandworth, there's not much he can do to help his teammate either. So well played by uh, Tanker for getting the Constellation Prize on the support there for the Legion team. Love does... Love's ward in top lane does spot Eluna rotating. Mm, where Fuzzy is he? was side pushing that entire time. Sorry, what were you saying? No, I was just. I, it seems like Evil Corporation is just going to wait for yet another Conger kill before they actually commit to another Rax push. Yeah, it does seem that way. Frost that will give Fox a lot of space as well. On Frost Wild Soul. Is oh, that wow. something that you agree with? Oh, what the fuck is that courier? <laughs> what is that? Oh, he just he just put a skin in the shop. He picked the skin. I think, but I've I... seen that one before. It looks like a Pokemon. <laughs> I'm not sure where that would be from, but yeah. Um, Malakin is. They are pushing bottom, it seems. So they're not really waiting for token. They just want to go uphill. Uh, I feel like I don't know. I mean, they've been playing so patient though up until this point. Actually, Wildsoul is going to be blocked by his teammate right there. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily. Uh... Yeah, I don't think come as a result. I don't think Hellborn's gonna aim that wild soul, especially with thirty armor. That's insane. That it is. Oh wait, they are gonna jump though. It's going to find Oscar here. He's in trouble. It's gonna fall before he gets his shockwave off. There's a shrunken head as well. They're gonna find Fassi. He's gonna go down. There is a buyback available for Gatolfan, but none for Oscar. But oh you God, got the Mirage on. activated as well, he's gonna fall though, it feels like the Hellborn team is going to be able to clear up the Legion team at this point, there's literally nothing the Legion team can do, like as soon as the Hellborn team goes as 5, as soon as they show the commitment, they just end the game. Yeah, uh, wow, they just executed so well on Evil Corporation. Yep, perfect breath to the Pharaoh and the 100% win rate on uh, Saint Pharaoh is indeed gonna continue. Yep, and they're just going for base push, so... Yeah, this is over. One on one for one here uh, between Complex... Oh Ooh. wait, did I speak too soon? Maybe I did. MSI comeback. Ah, <laughs> yeah. For sure, Tank of Ed might be in trouble as well. He's gonna find a creep, he's gonna jump in a warlock and he's gonna make his way out of there. Formless though, he's actually gonna get a double tap, he's gonna be able to finish off Bray in the background as well. So maybe I spoke a little bit too soon, but yeah, two sides of racks down now and a 20k gold deficit is not something to make uh, or take lightly. Definitely, but I think complexity is known for not conceding games like these. They always look for the turn, so that's just how they play. That it is. Yeah, but where do you go from now? Like, Congor is gonna respawn here. I'm surprised that it hasn't already, but it's going to be up any second. And, like, you kind of have to, um, like, contest that in that case, right? Or are you just gonna sit in your base and wait for Evil Corporation to uh, team up and start pushing that third lane? I think Complexity has to constantly push out lanes because with two racks down, if they don't push out bottom and mid oh, initiation. Mid lane. Oh my god, he's alone though. He might get a kill onto Behemoth. Ah, he's gonna oh. get it. And here comes Parasite as well with the Storm Spirit. Actually, gonna keep oh, his teammate alive. God. Is he going to be able to make it out? He is the same with the plays right there. Prisoner trying to land a hook as well. He's gonna get Boo Boo at least. I guess that's something. If you kill that, this is actually a 30 second cooldown. And that might result in a third Rax. Or at least Zane a Zane just kill. secured Congo. Or oh, even the game. Yeah, that was that play. incredibly risky, but it actually paid off in the end. Man. And symbol of rage on Malakin. Oh my god. Yeah. I, I, they don't have any buybacks on Oscar or Fuzzy Sloth, so yeah, I don't know how they're gonna... If the game wasn't difficult already, it sure yeah. as hell is now. Uh, it doesn't even seem like they're concerned about the third lane. They're just simply gonna go, oh, the hook lands on Formless. Yep. Prison Break goes up as well. He's gonna tr be able to actually retreat out. They're just gonna focus down the wall tree. Fast or Bray is just trying to buy some time. Uh, there is a team fight going on right now. There's a lot of stuff happening in the Prophet Ultimate, but the wall tree, it is falling, so it doesn't really matter who comes out on top. Yep. GG well played, and uh, yeah, one on one for Evil Corporation and Complexity Gaming. I, I, I must say that I think that both teams should be pretty happy with that one. That was an amazing game. But yeah. Evil Corporation, they just executed so well.
yeah, splitting the series, uh, Complexity had a very, very um, solid game number one, but in game number two, unfortunately, I feel like the draft, you know, came a little bit short, it had a little bit too many heroes that prioritized that farm, uh, not necessarily too much initiation, and Evil Corporation played it really well, 700 gold per minute on Imba Boy playing the Malik, and is indeed very impressive, and I have to give a shout out to Nier as well with the wards, he was really on top of it that game. Definitely. Anything else that you want to mention about this game number two before we go on a quick break here? I think that pretty much summed it up. Uh...